All right, welcome to a video on a game I haven't featured on this channel in a while. It was actually the first video I uploaded, uh, an American truck sim video after the little break that we took earlier on during the summer. But it's time to come back and with American Truck Simulator, I'm bringing back the Wilcam. It's been a while since I've featured this on the channel for any game. Um, if you've been around for a while, you remember that I used to do it pretty much all the time around last year. Last year's summer, I think it was. But it never really took off. It didn't really seem to add too much in terms of... Um, attention from you guys for the driving videos and it was just a lot of work having to constantly sync things up it was a lot tougher than you probably think and so i just dropped it but um tried it again alongside of the commentary that was something that was lacking before so uh there is that as well and hopefully it will be a nice mix that we can probably do more with in the future so yeah Enough of that. We've got American Truck Simulator today. This is one day after the release of the Arkansas DLC to give you sort of an idea on when this was recorded. I've picked up the Arkansas DLC and that has given us, well, Arkansas, obviously. If I can navigate myself uh, to the map with this new UI that I'm sort of still getting used to. I actually can't find the map for the life of me. All right, it was under navigation, who would have thought? So uh, we are currently starting in Oklahoma City. I have picked up a job. Uh, as you can see, and I'll get into this as we drive, but I haven't really <laughs> explored quite a lot of the uh, of the DLCs that have been released recently. And like I said, I'll get into that. But for this one, we are starting in Oklahoma City and making our way into Arkansas. I could have started at Little Rock in at Arkansas. It was unlocked to take a quick job from, which I really do like. Um, but I thought, you know what? I want the experience of going into it from uh, from the border and seeing what things are like that way. So that's what we're going to get into today. Our load is, if we hit escape over there, we have got a school bus. Yes, we are hauling a school bus, um, of course, from Oklahoma City to Pine Bluff. And uh, we're getting 17 grand for it, which I guess isn't too bad. Although, for the risk, <laughs> I would have liked to see a little bit more. Um, so this is the school bus in question. Kind of just your generic, average American school bus. Uh, we've got the beautiful Volvo today. And I say it's beautiful because it's it's, it's, it's quite a looker. To, it's not, it's not, 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 not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but it's all right. Um, the only thing, though, as you can see... To look at the uh, mirror, I kind of need to change the angle, which is a little bit annoying because I lose some, you see, I kind of lose like the actual sight of the rear of the trailer. Um, and we end up cutting off a, off a, gen a generous part actually uh, of our view. So I'm considering doing something I actually never do, which is uh, the F2 cam, which I hate. I really, really hate. But I think I might actually keep it on for this one. So do excuse me if you are like me and strongly dislike uh, using anything that sort of breaks immersion. But I actually, unless I had like a track IR or maybe I was playing in VR, I actually just wouldn't be able to properly check the mirror. Um, because we lose so much real estate um, in switching angles. I could use it to sort of look left, um, but to uh, use it to look in the mirror... No way, Jose. Right side, uh, again, it's not perfect, but we've got the little one there. Oh, to be fair, what I could do, I guess, I mean, we are playing, we are playing Euro Truck. We do have the ability to adjust the mirror, so why don't we just do that? Um, where do I want it? I guess I want it to be more, more inner, right? So that when I go to this view, no, it's like literally exactly the same. Okay doesn't make a difference i guess it only makes a difference when you're looking at it uh from straight the straightforward position so in that case i will just hit r to reset those settings we'll continue to have the uh virtual mirror on um pretty basic interior of course huge as per every uh, american truck extremely tall um you know what i don't mind the little design it's very like 90s grandma's house ish but I can get behind it with a collar. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, we do have built-in GPS, thankfully. So we're going to go into drive. Take the uh, handbrake off. And I think we're good to go. So 
Uh, I guess I'll get started with um, the... I guess... Uh, let me start with the commentary itself. So, I don't know how long I'm going to be yapping on for. I hope a decent bit. <laughs> um, but if I run out of uh, topics, I might just go quiet and let you guys enjoy the pure driving uh, alongside with the uh, steering wheel action. This is actually a really cool little... Uh, little place do i need to get waved or are we kind of good to go i think we're good to go this is something that i saw a lot of on the uh rhineland and fouls map or rpm on uh, euro truck simulator 2 which i was playing a little bit uh quite a bit of before the 1.50 stuff actually no before the 1.51 stuff um uh, because on 1.49 i was playing with about 90 not 90 100 plus mod files uh, mostly map, but a ton of other stuff. And so uh, I was on 1.49 for a fair bit. And uh, I only moved, actually, to 1.50 because of the uh, RPM app. And if you don't know, it's for uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2. And features a one-to-one -one scale map uh, of an area in Germany. And it's very, very well done. Uh, a lot of challenging roads is what I absolutely adore when driving big vehicles, whether it be trucks whether it be buses, any large vehicle that I'll drive in a game with a steering wheel, I adore the challenge. Oh, I have to break a little bit hard. Kind of caught in the middle there a little bit, but I think we just saved it. Fortunately, we're not going to have any pedestrians crossing, so there's no need to worry about that. Uh, as you can see, there is an IHOP to our left, and if you are familiar with the US shops and restaurants and stuff, that is actually a, a real store. So we are using some mods, Nothing too crazy. Everything that can be found on the workshop. We've got some stuff for... Oh, God. We've got fuel prices. We've got, like, real company names. Real... Something to do with the headlights, I think. Uh, some mirror mods to make them a bit more realistic. I think, in reality, they'd be a bit more magnified than what you get by default. So, yeah. Um, also, I just realized it's the first time recording since I started streaming properly without my face being recorded, but the camera still being gone. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you guys don't miss my face too much. <laughs> if you do want to see my face, tune into our streams. I do stream six days a week, every day but Sunday. Uh, and you'll see plenty of my face. Even when we do play some Euro Truck and American Truck Sim, uh, you'll get my face and the steering wheel. How do you ask? Well, tune in to find out. <laughs> anyway, um, I actually don't know what I was yapping on about before. This is my issue. Um, I can talk a lot and then I'll diverse, I'll diverge somewhere else really quickly. But then the really quickly turns into like five minutes. And then I forgot what my initial point was uh, that I wanted to come back to. I have the cruise control screen up on the computer. It's one of my preferred screens because I use cruise control a fair bit. And um, sometimes I find it a little difficult to read the analog gauges. And so, um, yeah, therefore, we'll just keep it uh, nice and simple. And uh, I also apologize because this video is meant to be in 4K and it's only as I'm recording right now, this very moment, wrong button, um, that I've realized I'm recording it in 1080p. So, um, yeah, so it's, but at least I think that makes it more accessible to everyone and makes life a little bit easier for me when uh, rendering. <laughs> Hopefully, I remember to record our next video of this similar nature in... Uh, 4k at least we'll get in it in 60 fps though eh? there is that so we're taking it nice and easy we don't have an incredibly long trailer it is a longer than standard i think trailer uh but nothing like the uh extra long i forgot what they're called now but the extra long um trailers where you get like the flags at the front and uh, the long vehicle sticker at the front of the uh at the front of the truck right uh, treat this like a stop sign. I don't know what these guys want to do. They're not really helping my uh, my case here. Right, I guess ultimately they did let me go, so I should be thankful. But I, won't, I will not be thankful for the confusion. Let's go over to the left there, actually. We do need to exit onto the highway. Enter into the highway, I should say. Uh, just after the, the lights. So we'll position ourselves to do that. Uh, and yeah, what I was initially going to talk about after the uh, quick bit about running a commentary is that as you saw earlier when we were uh, having a look at the map there was not really much explored in the way of new content and actually before i even get to that seeing as this is about arkansas i've got the uh, scs blog article up on my phone let us just go through arkansas real quick see what we're actually getting with this dlc and then i'll start yapping about personal stuff 
Uh, not exactly personal stuff, but you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, Arkansas going uh, off the article where they also got an update for the forest machinery DLC, which is kind of cool. Now, I actually haven't read this at all. This is my first time seeing it literally with you guys right now live. Well, not live because this is pre-recorded, but you know what I mean. It's live for me as I'm recording it. Uh, so it should be interesting. Uh, let's see what... Uh, yeah, let's see what they say, I guess. So... The sort of, I guess talking points are oh hello good sir that was uh interesting but somehow i feel quite realistic actually uh, for the standard of driving i usually see in the us in uh various uh videos online so we've got 10 explorable cities and i'm reading it from the article so this is going to sound very markety but this is not sponsored in any way 10 explorable cities including little rock where we are headed to Fort Smith, Fateville, and a Pine Bluff. Wait, are we heading to Pine Bluff, actually? No, I think we're heading to Pine Bluff, but we could have started at Little Rock. I think that was it, right? I did say something like that um, earlier on. I've forgotten, though. Right, speed limit 70. There's a minimum speed, which is interesting. Right, so we've also got uh, several landmarks unique to Arkansas. I would hope so, because otherwise... I'm not going to say the name of the game that I was going to use, but <laughs> there are other games that use their... Uh, in all their DLCs of different countries, uh, they use the same assets. So I would hope that SES, uh, knowing them pretty decently well, would actually use uh, unique assets. And surely and sure enough, they have. We've got several landmarks unique to Arkansas, such as the historical center of Hot Springs, with its bathhouse row and national park. Iconic art murals, those will be pretty cool to see. Actually reminds me of uh, the Crew Motorfest, a game I dearly miss. The majestic Arlington Hotel, courthouses, churches, and more. So, should be your generic Arkansas experience, <laughs> if I know anything about Arkansas, which is not much, actually. Um, I know Arkansas from a lot of Ghost Adventures episodes, and I think that's kind of pretty much it. And the sort of meme arkansas stuff uh we've also got 10 scenic towns and in brackets settlements so i guess these aren't actual like they're not like cities that we can stop at and drop loads off but just towns that we drive through so is my assumption i guess ultimately we will see uh discover a variety of different viewpoints as is sort of standard now in ets2 and the ats dlc See the famous Arkansas and Mississippi rivers which run through the state. That would be pretty cool. I don't know whether they're sort of quite basic or whether they actually sort of look cool. But we'll find out. Uh, drive across the impressively large Emmett Sanders. Oh boy, we're all over the roads. Emmett Sanders Lock and Dam, which has been in operation since December 1968. Cool, I guess. Uh, delivered to unique industries such as the nuclear one power plant that's actually kind of cool and custom built river ports and timber harvest depots again very very nice experience the new dynamic loading and unloading of logs onto your trailer I actually didn't even know that was a thing like I haven't even seen that in any videos or anything and discover the hidden treasures of Arkansas's countryside, forest, swampland, viewpoints, road network, and more. So, sorry, I'm pausing because I'm annoyed that I can't see the trailer in the mirror. And it's not because we're doing a slight turn. Because even as the uh, truck straightens up, we still can't really see much. So let me actually try and adjust that mirror. It's a little bit annoying, actually. Um, for... And um, oh, it should be it should be right, shouldn't it? There we go. There we go. Um, hopefully that's sorted it. There we go. Yeah, much better than the, the situation on the left side where even after adjusting it, it didn't really adjust. So uh, yeah, those are sort of the main points on the uh, the map itself. And then we've got some gorgeous pictures, which uh, I said I, I thought of making them something on the screen, but uh, I guess you could just check them out on the blog because it will kind of get in the way of, you know, the whole driving and steering wheel cam. Um, so it sounds pretty cool. It sounds pretty cool. I mean, marketing rubbish aside, um, 
I said, don't say I'm looking forward to driving. Now, not to say that I wasn't looking forward to the others. Don't get uh, the fact that I haven't visited them twisted. I just haven't really gotten around to playing. And I'll, uh, I'll get to that in a second. I thought that boat was transparent for a minute. Right, so with regards to the forest machinery DLC. Um, so there's a new vehicle that we can haul called the... Oh, let's slow down. There's uh, an incident, it seems, ahead of us. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I didn't want to slam on the brakes. That actually was a lot closer than I would have liked. The brakes just didn't really seem to break. Which I kind of like because you don't expect a, a truck to uh, stop on a dime. So I'm not complaining. Uh, so we've got a new vehicle to haul uh, called the Forestry Skidder. Um, and if I remember, I'll put a picture up of it because it kind of does look a bit cool. And if I forget to put a picture up, uh, silly me, visit the SES blog <laughs> and look, I will look at the article. Uh, it's there. Uh, and then it sort of just talks about this skidder itself. And we'll also be able to enjoy some cabin accessory stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, and then it talks about the bundle, the Arkansas bundle, which is a pretty, uh, pretty smart name for it. Uh, on the Steam, which is basically a bundle where you can uh, save some money and get yourself the Arkansas DLC. That's quite cool. Oh, it's like an American football uh, stadium. Pretty bloody cool. Or you can buy the Arkansas DLC and the Forestry Machine. De forestry Machine? Machine Forestry? Whatever it was called. The Forestry DLC. <laughs> the Forestry DLC for a nice little deal. Right. So, why haven't I played anything regarding um, American Truck Sim DLC? I haven't bought everything together as it see as it may seem i've actually purchased the dlcs as and when they were released my thing with uh buying dlc from ses is that i actually trust their stuff to be good i know for example texas had uh, quite a few negative reviews that i remember reading about so they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination ses but i appreciate the way they've gone about game development over the past decade and you know no names but you look at other studios and game devs and they just haven't treated their games with the same sort of love uh they haven't given their games the same longevity like we used to see once upon a time and in the midst of this whole sort of transition that seems to be taking place in the world of the de uh, game development SES have held their own um, and honestly, I'm very grateful for it. And so my sort of thank you to them is purchasing DLC without even needing to really vet it, knowing that I'm buying something good, something worth buying, something of good quality. And so, yeah, I I'm, happy to, uh, I'm happy to do that, basically. And what's basically been happening is that as I touched on previously, I had a ton, an absolute ton of mods for ETS2. And generally speaking, I find to get slightly more enjoyment out of uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2. I don't know exactly what it is. It could just be that I'm in the UK and I've only ever experienced driving in Europe. Um, I've driven in... Well, I've driven through with my parents a lot of countries in Europe. And so I have that sort of experience of being on the road in Europe. Whereas I don't have that same connection to the US. Not yet anyway. And so I think maybe that could play a part. Maybe the fact that the map mods... I mean, we do have, for example, the coast-to-coast -coast map. And I'm crazy about, like, you know, driving for hours. But I'm crazy about driving for hours in a map that looks decent. Now... The last time I tried Coast to Coast... So, I tried Coast to Coast recently on 1.49. But the time before that, that I tried Coast to Coast and the various other map mods for American Truck Sim was years ago. And what I found was... The base map was actually fine. The base map I find better than the base map on Euro Truck. But the modded maps were copy and paste and it was very copy and paste it wasn't really a secret copy and paste and i found that really jarring 
I didn't get a different experience every time I went to a different state or a different county. And that coupled with, I guess, just the mm, early days of American Truck Sim, it just didn't really cook up any interest for me. And my relationship since then with Euro Tr with uh, American Truck Sim has been just dipping my toes in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm not really giving it the time it probably deserved, to be completely honest. And so I've never given up hope on it, hence why I've gotten all the map DLC and all sort of the uh, like the trailer DLCs. Not the trailer DLCs, but the uh, the forestry stuff, for example, or the construction stuff, etc, etc, etc. And so I've always had faith. I've always, I've never given up on it, but it just didn't cap... Uh, yeah, it didn't capture me the same way Euro Truck did, basically. I'm going to have a little brief uh, drink of water because I've been talking for a minute. So, yeah. Buying the DLCs was sort of my... Just a way of me telling myself I need to get back into it or like I need to give it another go. And I'll do it at some point. And yeah, it's taken a minute, but uh, I'm trying to do this <laughs> content thing properly. And so let's do it. <laughs> whether it's Train Sim World, whether it's Euro American Truck Sim, whatever it may be, let's go and let's give anything a crack and uh, see how things pan out, basically. But I'm hoping to play some more Truck Sim. I really want the Moza TSW wheel. Um, I've been in love with it since I first saw it. And I'm really hoping at some point soon, I'll be able to splash the cash and purchase the lot because I need to I need to purchase like everything. The base, the wheel itself, which by itself is like 300 quid. Um, the the a desk clamp, the truck desk clamp, the uh, stalk, so for signaling, for the indicators, for the wipers. I think there's a retarder stalk as well that comes with it. But that's like 200 bloody quid and it's ridiculous. But I think it will be worth it eventually. Um, so right now, I'm more than happy with my handy dandy Thrustmaster um, T300 RSGT. But I would love to upgrade to the uh, Moza wheel. And my usual thing is, whether it be with peripherals, PC parts, my phone, my usual shtick is... Drive it, drive it until the wheels fall off, right? So I'll be going against my codes when I do buy the Moza wheel because I think this will last me a lot longer than uh, the time it will take me to actually get my hands on that wheel. But it will be so worth it. Um, and I'll probably sell this on. Um, probably I should have looked after it a little bit, judging by the scratch over here on the center line, but uh, it's all good. I'll send it on to someone who can... Uh, Give it a good home and give it a good life. I'm, uh, I've always been looking forward to driving on a direct drive wheel. To be honest, the belt driven is actually fine. Much better than the uh, gear system on the Logitech G29, which, and it's kind of, um, I don't know if, if I can say sad, but it's definitely one of those ignorance is bliss moments because it was fine, my Logitech G29. I'm talking the, the steering wheel itself, steering with it was always fine. There was always this weird dead zone in the very, 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 very center of the wheel. But I don't know whether through software updates or my own in-game settings in the games I used to use my wheel on. That dead zone kind of disappeared and I'm about to get cut off by a Jeep driver. Uh, Americans in the chat, please tell me. There you go, beautiful. Please tell me if that's accurate from uh, from Jeep drivers. I've heard a lot of things about Jeep drivers. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, cutting people off is one, but you've witnessed it yourselves. And yes, I could have braked a little bit more. I need to... I'm, bit, I'm a bit concerned about why my braking isn't as good as I as it is on Eurotruck. I think I've got different braking settings, um, which is something I should probably fix ASAP. <laughs> because going between Eurotruck and American Truck Sim is going to be a nightmare otherwise. Um, so I kind of need to remember to be a bit more on the ball with braking um, on here. But anyway, um, yes. So I did have a bit of a dead zone issue with my G29. 
But that was really it. Never had an issue with the pedals. The brake pedal was fantastic. Um, I'm sure if you know anything about the G29 Volt, you know that the brake pedal has gotten a lot of praise. And it was just a generally good experience. Until I started to delve more into the whole drive systems when it comes to steering wheels. And before I bought the G29, it actually wasn't really something I had done a ton of research on. But the time came and um, I was really into sim racing at the time. This was maybe last year if you've been around once again. Um, I used to stream a ton of sim racing content, even uh, released a couple of videos. It may have been just the one actually, but whatever. And so I was looking into wheels and sort of looking at what will give me the best experience when it comes to um, sim racing. And that's when I started to sort of learn a little more about direct drive and belt driven systems and gear driven systems, gear driven wheels. And I would go on, whether it be sometimes YouTube or just a, a website I came across on Google or Reddit, I learned that there were some complaints about gear systems and how sometimes you can feel them. From that moment, I could never unfeel the gears in the G29. Like, if I'm making big movements, we're actually in Arkansas. I don't know at what point we crossed over into Arkansas, but we are in Arkansas. Uh, Little Rock is, of course, part of Arkansas. We, we mentioned it during the uh, the article, and it looks pretty cool. I love what SES do with like distant scenery. Like those buildings. They don't look like, you know, back in the day, like in PS2 games, they'd look so distant. Like they look within reach, but they're not actually within reach, I don't think. Sometimes they are, for the most part, though, it's just a bit of trickery. But I love it. I really, really do love it. Maybe they are actually all within reach. I guess we'll find out when we actually get to explore a, a city properly in Arkansas. Anywho, after learning about the gear system and that you could actually feel it, I can never unfeel it. Doing big movements, like such as that, was okay. But when it came to like small Wells Fargo, is that okay? I, I guess a mod changed that name because surely Wells Fargo can't be. Surely you need licensing for that, right? Surely that's copyright. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to put money on um, that being a, a product of uh, the mod that I've got that makes uh, that gives real names to companies and stuff. But yeah, when making incremental movements with the wheel, uh, the G29, you could feel the gears going do, 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 do. And man, it ruined it for me. It really ruined it for me. And um, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I could not look back. Could not look back. Fortunately, or unfortunately, but fortunately more so, um, the pedals developed some issues and so oh hello okay let's move over before uh we get into a bit of a mess my pedal started to give way and it gave me an excuse to uh buy a new wheel and i wanted at least a belt driven system of course i was on a as well not of course but i was on a budget and so this kind of fit perfectly it's not it was not cheap 350 pounds i think it was not cheap at all but actually good value, you know. Um, I feel like I've gotten what, what I've paid for and I continue to do so. And it goes a little bit beyond the general, the generic 900 degree rotation, which knowing that I was gonna do a lot of truck simming with it, kind of helped. Again, 1800 degrees, I'm gonna leave to Moza <laughs> and just direct drive wheels in general. But it's nice having that little bit extra rotation. It really does make a difference when I'm playing uh, a bus sim or truck sims. So it sort of was perfect for that moment in time. But yeah, now that I have an excuse for getting a direct drive wheel in the TSW rim, I want a direct drive wheel and I want that. <laughs> Character. I want a Moza direct drive wheel. They're incredible. I know Hori also have their own um, trucks in, but it. Uh, I've heard some not so great things about it, and to be honest, I can kind of see that. And from what I'm aware of, 
Hori don't have the best past in terms of wheel designs and I think they've tried to capitalize with their um, truck steering wheel on the market or the demand for truck rims but they haven't really been able to nail it with uh, what looks to be poor quality builds in their wheel and it's a bit of a shame because all those buttons actually make it seem in theory a lot more uh, it's a lot more appealing with all those buttons i won't lie um you there's a lot that goes into um truck simming and the more the merrier in terms of buttons haven't been left too much space. I'll open her up a little bit. I think we've managed. I can't see too much because of the uh, situation of the mirrors. But I think we've managed. So yeah, the buttons are very appealing. The gear stick, very appealing. The stalks, it's like the full package. But if it's just going to be a bunch of plastic, then, you know, it's... I'd rather take the Mozart with clearly good build quality it's gotten good reviews and look if that's a, if that's a, a bad take and the wheel ends up being a hit then silly me yeah and i'll take the l on the chin that actually wasn't even my fault that was ridiculous uh that actually was not my fault i was still moving when i got hit but um <laughs> that was gonna be a, a collision regardless that range rover was not stopping for anyone typical range rover driver makes sense very much on brand um but yeah Little look at Hot Springs. It does seem like a pretty decent little town. I like um, how in American Truck Sim, and I guess in Euro Truck Sim as well, every town or every state or every city or every country in the uh, the case of Euro Truck does have its own flavor, does have its own taste. You don't go to one country from the other and not really notice that you've made that change and so yeah i appreciate the little uh work that ses do in that sense um but yeah there's also the aerosoft wheel aerosofts also have a wheel which um <sighs> i look at how aerosoft treat their games right and how they've always treated their games slow development leaving tons of potential on the table and a physical product from them doesn't really fill me with hope once again it doesn't look like it's going to be of incredible quality we'll wait until there's a release i don't think there's even a release date as of yet i could be wrong but i did do some research on it a few weeks back and there wasn't a release date yet but it doesn't look too promising it's a truck wheel um, I'm not sure what method, what motor it has inside. I know the Hori one is a gear-driven motor, which I didn't even touch on. But that was also a disappointment for me personally. And look, let's be honest. You do not need some stupid torque, some stupidly high torque direct drive wheel for trucks in. You do not. That's why, for example, with a Mozart, you can go for an R3 base, which is the lowest in the bases. Uh, the less, the least powerful one, and and you're good to go. However, I would have liked to see at least, at least, a uh, a belt driven motor for, uh, for 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 a proper experience, for an immersive experience as well. Especially with all the stalks and the buttons, like they've all they've gone all out clearly for sort of the sake of immersion, but. Ah, uh, cheaped out at in at one of the most crucial um, points, in my opinion. We'll slow down a little bit. We do need to merge left wire soon, very soon. And uh, Jesus Christ is long, but thankfully the uh, traffic behind left us a uh, a healthy gap to fit through. Ah, uh, oh boy, this is an L. Right. So this. Uh, okay, let's mark this as a uh, place to avoid. I was hoping. We'd be, we would have been able to uh, go through, but apparently not. Apparently not. So we'll avoid that. Um, or do I put it? Do I put it here? 
can I get rid of this and only have the avoid? Yes, we can. But I also need to avoid this too because that is where the uh, that is where the traffic is. So we're going to end up going all the way around instead of straight through there, which normally I'd have complained. But what that simply means is that we most likely are going to be exploring roads we otherwise uh, wouldn't have been able to. I do set my navigation to the best setting, not longest, not shortest. No, sorry, not shortest or small roads. That's Those are the ones. Not shortest or small roads, but rather uh, best. And that probably means, as it's always going to be set to best, it will probably give me the same roads over and over as long as I'm traveling through the same areas sort of thing. And uh, so diversions like these where we're forced to do something a little different mean that um, we end up avoiding the sort of generic kind of routes. And I'm kind of surprised because I thought it would have gone right here, but I guess not. I guess it's, a, uh, it's another right further down. Uh, there's a beautiful blue bridge over there in the, uh, the far right corner. Absolutely gorgeous. Would have loved to know the, uh, the name of it, but... Uh, Here's what it is. Oh, it's also RGB. Or is that a different... Is that two bridges or is that one long one? No, it's one long one, but it's RGB. Nice. We've got RGB bridges before GTA 6. Great. But yeah. Um, so far. Not too much to speak on, really. We are well in Arkansas. I, I must have missed the uh, Welcome to Arkansas sign on the uh, right-hand side of the highway if there was one i would have expected there to be one i would expect there to be one for every uh new state so here's our uh, exit jacksonville and memphis exit as a helicopter flies somewhere above us but yeah um if you're still here comment yes below with nothing else just yes and uh, let everyone that hasn't watched the whole video or gotten this far guess why you said yes and why everyone's saying yes um but if you have gotten this far first and foremost thank you very much and secondly what do you think of these um commentary videos what do you think of just having american truck same in general plus the commentary i mean at the end of the day bald knob that can't be a real place surely it was, it was on one of the, it's, it's, it's going to be on this highway sign as well it's the first one. Bold knob. That can't be a real place. That can't, That's not a real place. Surely that's just another name for a shade penis. Bold knob. I feel like it's, we, we're the only ones, as in being in the UK, we're sort of the only ones that call a penis a knob. But bold knob just seems too good to be true. <laughs> Anywho. Um, yeah. Um not a channel that does one thing and one thing only i know we do a ton of tsw5 and it's a game that i'm probably enjoying the most right now but also the game that sort of just works the best for the channel as well kind of do have to find that middle ground as a very small content creator trying to grow and um tsw5 just seems to be or just tsw in general um train sim world seems to fit very well for the channel and in terms of viewership and growth and stuff like that. But I'm open to anything. And if I've invested as much as I have in a will, then I'm also very much into the land of driving games and driving sims. As you can probably tell with my, uh, I don't know how many hundreds of videos of uh, city car driving that we've got. So I'm down to make um, driving videos. It's just that there is almost so little time to stream as much as I want to stream. I'm aiming to do at least six hours a day from now on. It's not an easy feat, but we'll try. We'll try. I am trying to take this whole thing as seriously as I possibly can. Um, but six hours a day, six days a week is very tasking. And uh, then obviously trying to record and edit everything and, you know, deal with uh, not the greatest upload speed as well which uh, does provide a bit of hindrance but then it spices things up eh and uh maybe it would be a bit too boring if it was too easy so um yeah i am going to try and do these videos a little more often 
but with everything I've said and uni creeping up around the corner, it's only going to get harder. So I'll give you my word that I'll try. What the result will be, we can only wait and see. But uh, yeah, onwards we go. I'm actually quite glad that I've got the wheel cam sort of built into the recording. What I used to do, and you can call me a fool for this, it is what it is. <laughs> what I used to do was record, because I wanted everything to be in 4K, uh, my phone can record in 4K, so I used to record the steering wheel in 4K and obviously record the game in 4K and then I'd merge the two together. Syncing the two so that when I'm turning the wheel, you can see the wheel turning in the game was a nightmare sometimes it would be pretty easy sometimes i would get lucky and boy other times my patience could have only come from the lord himself so uh to be doing it this way where it's that is what is going to be synced automatically off the rip is fantastic and this is how i'm go going to do things moving forward i hope that so the camera that i'm using to record is 1080p and oh that was close um the bad close because we actually did hit it. it wasn't close and i almost hit it but anyway um the front of the truck is actually a little longer than it seems it's weird because i can't see it but i guess it sort of goes down a little bit um but yeah i hope when i do record in 4k the quality of the webcam won't seem terrible being literally four times uh lower resolution if it does look odd then I'll probably just record these uh, videos in 1080p. I don't think that would be too big of a problem for you guys. If you, like me, are a sucker for eye candy, then I apologize. Um, but it's sort of just the case, at least for now. At least for now. Right, there is a stop sign, and I know legally we should stop at a stop sign. But I think the general sort of rule amongst drivers is uh, you go past it at snail's pace, looking left, looking right, and if there's no cops and no cars coming, then uh, you're good to go. So that's the kind of uh, rule of thumb I apply when driving in games too. Not recommended. Let me uh, put that there as a disclaimer. Don't try this at home. That's the one. So we've got 95 miles to go to in-game hours. I actually still, and I say this almost every time I play these games, whether it be uh, Euro Truck or American Truck Sim, I still don't know what the conversion from in-game time to real life time is. I think I've been told the 24-hour in-game time, but then, number one, that's not hourly. I would need to do the maths and, well, not exactly great at that. But also, the time, the speed that the time moves at in-game, it's not consistent. So if you come to a stop and you're just stopped, you're not moving, you'll see that the time moves incredibly slow. When you're driving at 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, you'll see that the time moves a lot quicker. Now, I don't know whether this has anything to do with the world scale, the in-game scale of the map, or what. I, don't, I can't think of anything that would make sense, but that's sort of the thing. So I don't think we can ever really have a consistent actual conversion from in-game time to real lifetime and it's not just american trucks and the same happens on euro trucks as well i guess unsurprisingly right so i think what we'll do is we'll head over to pine bluffs was it i think it was pine bluff something like that pine bluff singular not plural we'll head over to plan pine goodness me Ooh, we'll head over to Pine Buff and call it there. And then, um, oh boy, for the next one, we'll probably uh, go from Pine Bluff to... Why is that a mouthful? It's really simple. I really feel like it shouldn't be a mouthful to say, but it somehow is. Um, anyway, after we get to Pine Bluff, end it there. And then the next video will go from Pine Bluff to somewhere else in Arkansas. And it will basically be like an Exploring Arkansas series, right? So like, maybe we'll do like a part one or a part two and just keep going until we've explored everything basically. And that's sort of my aim when it comes to these games. Now I know Euro Truck and American Truck Sim don't actually have an end game. 
and the career mode really is just driving, doing jobs, buying trucks, customizing them, building your company, buying trucks for your company, expanding your company, expanding the garages. I know that's the game. But for me, the target I set for, my, for myself is to basically explore all the cities and all the states. And in the case of Euro Truck, all the countries, of course. Ooh, boy. Okay. We are breaking a little harshly. But I would rather break a little harsh than uh, not enough. I do also wonder if uh, we can get fined for uh, not stopping at... Um, not stopping at stop signs. That would be cool. I don't think it's a thing. I could be wrong. But it would be cool. It would be cool. I'm interested to see how long this uh, formation is going to be. So what's this meant to be? A Union Pacific? It is meant to be Union Pacific. I can tell by the, uh, the flag. And that's it. It's pretty short. I don't know if I still have it. But I did at one point have a mod that basically made the trains actually stupidly long as they are in real life. And I can understand why <laughs> SES didn't bring that in because it would be very annoying seeing how it seems that every time you approach a crossing, they're active. Which I understand is for sort of, it kind of spices the gameplay up rather than always going through crossings and never seeing a train but I'd prefer if they sort of made it so that you don't see a train every single time you're at a crossing but when you do you have to wait and annoying as it may be it's realistic right we are playing a simulator after all and so if it means waiting even just 30 seconds let's say 30 seconds to a minute i think would be appropriate because you still feel the time it takes waiting for a freight train to cross in front of you but then it wouldn't drive you nuts and so i think yeah 30 seconds to a minute would be a decent middle ground in my opinion better than these eight carriage formations that we see which in reality as long as you're not near like um a yard or a factory of some sort you probably won't see formations that short another thing that annoys me is the virtual mirror is I think in, I think it's set to high in terms of the graphical settings because you can see how it's a bit lighter than the actual scene um, that we have in front of us. And I'm pretty sure the, um, when you set the mirror settings to, why do I have a, a ring, a phone, a Nokia ringing? I think that's a mod. I think I actually have a mod for um, that audio. That can't be SES, surely. That has to be a mod. And usually I'll have that setting off because I find it really annoying. But see, that was cute because it rang a few times like a phone would because the delivery could be late, right? And in reality, you know, wherever you're delivering to, if they feel like this guy should be here by now, I'm sure they'll ring. They'll ring up the driver and say, hey, what's, what's, what's the hold up? And so that was cute. That was like a ring from the uh, from the company that we're delivering to. They're expecting the order soon. They want to see how far we are. I can appreciate that. You know what? I'm going to leave that on. Usually, I'll turn that audio off alongside with like the intro music. I'm going to leave that one on though. I like that one. I completely forgot the point I was making. Oh, yeah, the mirrors. So, I remember when I used to play on like medium high settings, when I used to sort of struggle with the settings. Um, thank the Lord we have come very far from those days. Um... It would only be, I think, Ultra, where the mirror would actually reflect the lighting in the environment rather than changing it to sort of make it easier on your system. Um, we do have a situation ahead of us, it seems. Now, I'm sure the truck can move if he wanted to, but he's being petty. And I hope the, uh, the truck behind him, the little one, can be a bit more patient this time around. But yeah. I noticed that whenever you set the uh, the mirror at the time, maybe they've changed it. I don't know. This was literally years ago. Um, it would make the lighting a little bit different to what was actually going on in front of you. And it seems like they haven't changed that, which... Um, I don't know. I would have preferred it was also set to the same setting that the actual in-truck mirror was set to. Because at the end of the day, it is just that mirror, but detached. 
and if someone can handle the mirror being on ultra settings for example or very high and i'm sure they can handle the virtual mirror uh, being on the exact same setting i realize i was taking sometimes a little too wide earlier i do need to sharpen up my uh, my truck driving skills i used to be a god when it came to truck driving honestly i was humbled a little bit by vr because when you get into virtual reality and you're driving in euro truck or american truck sim you actually feel for some reason i experience it more in euro truck than american truck sim but nonetheless you actually feel the size the sheer hugeness of these trucks and their cabins and so <laughs> if you drive normally on a monitor the way i used to drive very aggressively and very very brave yeah you get humbled real quick and um you start taking it a lot more easier than you do um on a screen when you're in virtual reality once again i forgot my point completely forgot my point remember what i said at the beginning about when i digress yeah whether I come back on topic or not, it's literally a 50-50. Roll of the dice. It's a gamble. Anywho. We are now at Pine Bluff. And we entered the Pine Bluff area. A little while ago. It's been about five minutes. We're still on the road. I like that. I remember the days when... You know, the very early days of Euro Truck. And American Truck Sim, to be fair. Even with some of their early DLCs. When the towns and cities that you'd enter... Would have like four or five roads in them. And then that was it. And it would be like straight and very, very basic. And nowadays, here we are. Where you can enter a town or a city or a place. And actually spend minutes and minutes and minutes on them. It's, it's something I absolutely adore, man. I love it for the sake of immersion and realism it's very mobile phone gamey to you know enter a city in a driving game and the city will be about three or four roads wide and then <laughs> that's it enjoy your 30 seconds in the city of barcelona and that's that you know i love this and that was one thing i adored with pro mods and the rest of the map mods that i was playing with was that cities are just huge and even if they weren't necessarily huge, they were they felt huge. There was so much to do, so much to see, so many roads to travel on, even in a small area. It made it feel bigger than it actually was. And I love that. I honestly absolutely adored that. I'm actually really, really happy about bringing the, <laughs> bringing the wheel cam back. For, ironically, the Bill mentioned it to me earlier. If you are uh, a regular on the streams, then you'll be very... Uh, um, you, you, you'll know who, uh, you'll be familiar with Nabil. He is a, uh, a resident king on uh, on my channel. But he uh, mentioned to me yesterday in Discord that it was uh, a pretty cool idea that I should bring it back doing the, uh, the steering wheel cam. And like, it wasn't even planned. I just thought it would actually be a pretty cool idea as I'm uh, going to record American Truck Sim anyway. And I don't usually do these videos too often, so when I do do them, I might as well spice them up a little bit, make them worth watching, you know. But hopefully, like I touched on earlier, there'll be more of these driving videos, whether it be American or Euro Truck Sim, whether it be the bus, maybe. I've done a lot of the bus content. I've got a lot to say on the bus. I'm going to save it for the bus. Hopefully, there'll be a big update soon where I can use um, that as a sort of excuse for uh, recording content of it. Uh, but yeah, there is a lot to say <laughs> on that game. Not necessarily all positive, but definitely, I think, some interesting talking points. And it will be a mixed, um, it will be a mixed opinion kind of thing. So uh, here we are. We've arrived so soon at Sherwood. Sherwood, indeed. I don't know who's with we're sharing, or maybe, maybe not. Scratch that. Um, yeah, we are at Sherwood. It's been a decent drive. Arkansas. This is my thing, right? Like, I have to be real with you guys. I can't tell you how it feels compared to other DLC because, well, I haven't explored the. I haven't really explored the other DLC. And you know what? Maybe I'll make this into a series where we explore. So uh, it'll be like exploring Arkansas. This will be exploring Arkansas Part One, right? And then I'll do exploring Nebraska, exploring Oregon, and exploring Texas. And then I think that will be like a good excuse to kind of get back into the game, start making content on it again. 
And um, look, the phone's ringing again. I actually really like that. It's, it's very, very realistic. Um, it's like the phone keeps ringing every 10 minutes because the guys are like, hey, this guy still ain't here. He still ain't here. He still ain't here. And uh, yeah, I love it. So uh, as you saw, that was a quick job because I actually don't have my own truck. The reason for that is, even though we're sitting on 646k, all legitimate, uh, is because I want to get the uh, not Kenworth. Because if, oh no, is it Kenworth? Oh, this ain't good. I should know. Um, oh goodness sake, where is it? Uh, catalog, right? And truck explorer, and. It is the Kenworth, yes. It's, it was the T that threw me away. I didn't know whether it began with T or if T was the model name. T680, she's an absolute beauty. Gorgeous. I love her. Look at those eyes. The eyes just look fantastic. Beautiful cars, beautiful lines. A truck I really, really want. Um, and so, can't afford it, but to buy it. Oh, it's got an... E cam. I know that's not what they're called, but you know what I mean. It's got a mirror, basically a mirror camera, which I might use actually because I don't know. Hmm. I actually don't even know if we have, if I have a choice. I think it's only that option. It seems like. But yeah, she's a beauty. But I need to be level twenty five. That was the whole point <laughs> of this whole thing. I need to be level twenty five. So we're working our way up. It's taking a little bit longer. I probably would be better off buying like a cheap truck and doing my own jobs like that. And then, because I think you make a lot more money that way. But hey-ho, I am enjoying driving different trucks because once we have one, we're going to have that only one for a very long time. So yeah, I'm making the most of exploring different trucks, seeing how they all feel. Maybe I'll find something that I enjoy more than the T680. I don't think I've even driven this in quick drop. I don't know if it's available to do so, um, but I certainly don't remember doing so. I've driven the T680 2014 quite a lot, but not the uh, more recent one. But yeah, anywho, thank you very much for uh, hanging around if you have made it this far shout out to you please dis uh, do consider subscribing and liking the video if you have enjoyed what you see again i do stream six days a week variety of games so come on to the streams and hopefully i have something that you like to watch you are all more than more than welcome to join the discord as well uh, which should be in the description and until next time have a lovely rest of your day thank you so much for being a part of this uh Part of, part of this experience, I guess. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay safe. Health is wealth. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care and peace out.